Hey guys, this is Scott from Church Tech Talks. Hey, I wanted to make a quick video today sharing how we're using the Apple TV and the Plex app to distribute video to all of our classrooms on campus. Now, this isn't just useful for houses of worship, but I think it could also be useful for schools. So if you're in that environment, um, stay tuned and I'll show you exactly how to set up Plex, how to use the Apple TV, have it set up and uh, get video pumped into all of your classrooms in a very easy and very affordable way. All right, so the first thing you're going to want to do is head over to Plex.tv and set up an account. You're just going to click sign up right here, follow the on-screen prompts, and I'm going to start from scratch with you and take you step by step through this. And here is our brand new Plex account. So next what we're going to go and do is add our media to this. And they have all of this stuff on here. And I don't know about you, but in our classrooms uh, where we have young children, I don't want things like Resident Evil <laughs> appearing on the screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go unpin all of these items here right in the beginning. And then I'm going to go ahead and add my media by clicking this add your media tab. Now, first thing you need to do is click that get Plex media server and it's going to take you to an area to download that. So we're going to download that from Mac and we're going to go ahead and once it's done it downloading, we're going to install that. All right, so to install that, what you're going to do is you're just going to double click on that zip file. It'll give you the Plex media server and then you can drag that over to applications. Then you're going to go to your applications and launch it. It'll ask you if you want to give notifications. You can click allow or don't allow. So we're going to go ahead and sign in with that account we just created. It's going to give you this little dialog. Just click got it. We're going to close that dialog. We can give it a friendly name. So this is Scott's MacBook Pro. You can allow or disallow you to access media outside your house. Um, if you're doing this at your church you probably want to just disallow this so now it's going to just set up your media here so i'm going to click x on music because we're not going to add any music here yes i'm sure we're going to click x on photos we're not going to add any photos here and we're going to click add library now there's a couple different things on here you might think oh, i'm adding a bunch of movies so let me click movies well what this is going to do is it's actually going to search the web for um, metadata so it's going to try and retrieve a uh, image for you and a description um, of what it's guessing the movie is well if you are a church or a school that is importing your own videos it's not going to have that and so it'll often guess the wrong stuff so what we want to do is click other videos and we're just going to name this for what we do is we just name this what our database is so um you could just name this you know church video database or whatever you want to call it we'll just call it church video database for now click next and then we're going to add our folders now this is your local folders on your computer you need a computer to be running for your apple tvs to be able to access that video so we use this on an imac that is always on campus it's always on it's always connected to the internet um, and that's what you're going to want to do. It doesn't have to be a dedicated server. Um, it can run on your, you know, admins iMac in the background, or they even have PC versions. I'm saying Macs because we use all Macs here, but this also runs on PCs. And for that matter, you don't even need an Apple TV. This runs on Chromecast. There's Plex apps for Chromecast as well and Amazon Fire Sticks and stuff like that. So you can do this even cheaper, um, but I'm just doing uh, how I use it and what we do. So. I'm going to go ahead and click uh, browse for media folder and I've already created one on my desktop. It's going to ask if I want to allow to use that. Yes. Um, and then I did a little fake movie database here. Now you can see we have multiple folders in this, but I'm going to add all of them by clicking add right here. And then I'm going to click add library. This is ready to go. You can see I got a little dialogue up here says it's scanning that folder. We can click next and then click done. It's going to ask us what pin sources we want to do and I'm just going to do none of them. 
All right, so once you get back here, you're gonna go into more, and this is our video database here. It might not show up right away. It didn't for me just now, and it's just because it needed to scan it. So let it scan for a bit, maybe refresh the page and check on it periodically, make sure it's coming in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on that and just click pin so that when we're kind of back at our home screen, I have that right there. And then when you are clicking on that video database that you just created, you can view it a couple different ways. This is the recommended video tab. You can also just go to library, and that'll show you all your movies. And if you have a lot like we do, a lot of folders, a lot of structure, you can drop that little bar down and arrange by folders. And even more so, you can go to the classic list view of folders. So it's a little bit easier. So here's our video. This is the one we imported. You can play it right in there. Quick shout out to Pexels, uh, not sponsored by them or anything like that, but I got all these free videos from them. So yeah, so you can play it right in your browser and this is set up, this is ready to go. So we can go ahead and switch over to the Apple TV and get that ready. All right, so now that we've got our media server set up on our computer that is gonna be hosting the video files, we're gonna go ahead and go over to our Apple TV. And we've got it set up this way. We have settings available, and then we just have a folder with everything else in it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go to the App Store, and the first thing I'm gonna do is just download Plex here. Once it is downloaded, I'm gonna move it to the front position here. We're just gonna go ahead and click on that, launch it, and we're gonna click sign in. Now you can sign in with your Apple account, but the easiest way to do this is just to do it through their uh, link setup, and I'll show you how to do that real quick. So now we've got the Plex app launched, and we're gonna go ahead and go up to sign in, click on that, and then we're gonna not continue with Apple ID, we're gonna click on sign in right there. And that's gonna give us a link to visit and a code to enter. So on your computer, you're gonna go ahead and go to plex.tv slash link, you're gonna enter in that code that they just gave you, hit enter, it's gonna link your Apple TV with your Plex account. Now, if you're not logged in on the computer where you enter that code, you might have to re-log back into the account you created, but you don't have to be on the computer uh, where the media server is. You can do it on any computer. You can do it on your phone. You just have to be logged into that same account. So now it's gonna ask me to customize my navigation. Once again, I'm gonna deselect everything that isn't that database. So there we go, and now we've got our server on here, and I can go back and select the server itself, and if I go up to our library view here, then I can drop it down and go to where it's filtering by movies, I can switch it to filter by folders, and now we've got a nice folder view of our entire database. So for instance, if we had some maybe worship music videos, we could put them in that folder. It's gonna show all you all the videos in there, and you can do folders inside folders and nest them and organize it however you want. Click play and there you go. That's it, that's literally how simple this is. Um, you, we use this for dozens of Apple TVs throughout our campus, all simultaneously, all coming from one computer. And as long as your video footage is H.264, so it's already encoded well, then you're not gonna have a problem. You can use apps like Handbrake to import movies that you want to have in your database. Be mindful that if you do not have the proper licensing, that is illegal. So make sure that your church has the proper license for every video you're putting on there. If you do have a license for something and Handbrake won't import, it's likely because it has some built-in protection on it. And there's a way you can go download this thing, I think called Lib LibDiv something. Uh, just Google it and uh, you can take the step-by-steps to actually bypass that. But you, you can only do that if you have the legal authority to do that. So if you have the license for the videos, that's the only uh, legal way to do that. So um, make sure you're licensed or you're using all your own videos that you own the rights to. But this is a great way to distribute video to all your classrooms and we have classes, we have kids worship, we have all kinds of stuff on this and each classroom teacher can just grab an Apple TV remote. It's super simple to use and they can kind of play whatever they want there. Last thing I will mention is um, back on your computer if you ever do add videos to that or change the titles of videos or reorganize it, you're gonna wanna make sure you go up to this top menu bar up here, this little preference drop down and just click update libraries and it's gonna do that scan again. Making sure that your library is up to date, it's organized, and that all of your Apple TVs can see all the media that is in that folder that you've given it before. So there you go, hope you guys have enjoyed this video and if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and otherwise I'll see you on the next episode. Episode, vlog, I don't know what to say. All right, see you later.